Hello people of the internet, um, I am back um, after my cochlear implant surgery which was one week ago today so that's good. Um, so I'll just tell you how it went. So first things first, um, a few days before the um, surgery I had to have a pre-assessment so I had to go into the hospital and they like checked my heart and checked my blood pressure and did some blood tests and all that sort of stuff. Um, they also gave me um, like an information sheet and um, a thing like a urine sample pot <laughs> and um, a bottle of heavy scrub. Uh, lucky me. Uh, so on the day of the surgery, so the night before, um, and the day and the morning of the surgery, I had to wash my entire body, including my hair, like completely with hippie scrub. Um, and then like clean towel, clean sheets, everything, go to sleep next morning, do it all again. Um, and also the morning of the surgery, I had to do like a urine sample so they could check that I wasn't pregnant. Um, there was no way I was going to be pregnant, uh, but whatever. Um, yeah, and then um, I also, a couple of days before the surgery, had to get a COVID test. Um, and my mum did as well, but she was going to come into the hospital with me. Um, had to do a COVID test and then isolate after the COVID test. Um, obviously, it was all negative. It's all good. Um, then, sorry, I've got notes here, that's why I keep looking. So then um, on the day of the surgery, um, I, my surgery was supposed to be at 5.30 in the evening, so I could eat until 11.30. So I could have like breakfast and everything as normal. Um, and I was allowed to drink water until 3.30. Um, so, you know, went to the hospital um, and got all like, oh my goodness, oh yes, so the, I got my um, cochlear implant with the University of Southampton Auditory Implant Service and they, um, for the adult patients who are like healthy and everything, they, even though it's on the NHS, they do, um, they do the surgery in like a really posh private hospital. Um, it was the Nuffield Hospital in Eastleigh, um, in case anyone, you know, knows. Oh my goodness, it was so posh, like you have, it was like a hotel room, they had like fancy soap and everything, um, I'll put, I'll put pictures up, I took those, they had fancy soap, a Dyson fan, uh, they had a little like a welcome card on the like a pillow of the bed, they had, uh, this is the best bit, a little card apologising for the noise and um, a pair of earplugs. Uh, not really necessary in my case, but still appreciated nonetheless. Um, yeah, um, so then I had to get um, dressed into a hospital gown and um, some very nice compression stockings. Um, I've got some photos of that as well. I will, I will put a photo. I've um, got my compression stockings on. Uh, a nurse then came in and like asked me a load of questions, which I'd already been asked before, but like they can't be too careful, can they? So I had to answer all the questions again. Um, then I was kind of waiting a few hours. By this point, I was getting really thirsty. I was like. <laughs> Um, and then the anaesthetist came in and asked me pretty much all the same questions again, but again, good to know, and just basically let me know that sometimes the anaesthetic makes you feel really sick when you wake up. Um, it did, but, um, yeah, sorry, pause for thought, I lost, lost my train of thought. Yeah, so anaesthetist came in, uh, then... We were kind of waiting for ages. 5.30 came and went. Um, then at around quarter to six, uh, the surgeon kind of 
Kate, Kate ran into the room dripping with sweat like completely out of breath and was like right okay I'm here and um then I was allowed to like walk down into the theatre I just had to like wear my hospital gown and like slippers and a dressing gown and they just took me in there um they just like I, I was allowed to wear my hearing aids and my glasses into theatre like until I was asleep they took them off me when I was asleep um and they yeah they just put a needle in my hand and put me to sleep it wasn't that much of a big deal um then when I woke up um they'd put my left they'd put my left hearing aid back in when I woke up so I was like I wasn't super loopy from the anaesthetic I was worried that I was going to say something like really weird or something but I didn't I did I woke up and I was like why can I hear stuff because <laughs> I, I didn't realize I had I, I'd kind of I was a bit confused but I didn't I wasn't super loopy and then I felt when I, I first woke up from the anaesthetic I felt completely fine like I was kind of on the bed in the recovery room and I was like I was asking the nurse there like oh do you want me to get up and like walk to the room um and they're like no no, no stay there and we'll, we'll we'll wheel you around but um I yeah I felt completely fine when I first woke up um unfortunately that was not to last um then after I got back to the room oh also I, I was apparently really really cold I can't remember this but they put like loads of blankets on me because apparently I was really cold then about 15 minutes later when I was back in my room I was then really really hot and was telling everyone I was like asking everyone to take all the blankets off me um then I felt really sick um and my, my thank goodness my mum was there because they people were asking me like I, firstly I couldn't really understand what I think anyone was saying because I was a bit out of it and like I'm deaf so um then yes yeah, so yeah uh, my um my um mum basically um you know was like are you going to be sick and I was like no I'm fine don't worry my mum's got a video of me coming out on the um with the um coming back into the room on the bed and everything and I was like I'm fine don't worry <laughs> I'm fine yeah so I was like no no don't need a sick bowl I'm fine um my mum was like no you're gonna be sick and um told the nurses like went and got me a sick bowl or whatever I don't really know exactly what happened which was lucky because about 30 seconds later uh I was violently unwell <laughs> um I mean obviously it was just like water because obviously I hadn't eaten anything but um yeah I was I was sick um and then I had like a really really awful kind of attack of vertigo like awful like you know the kind of vertigo where like you have to just lie completely still with your eyes closed and like it's like even if I moved my toes it would send my like head spinning I don't like just awful it was as bad as when I lost my hearing um and um but then the issue is obviously because I can't hear anything if anyone's trying to talk to me I have to like open my eyes and turn my head to look so I was feeling awful at this point um oh I also had like a massive bandage around my head I'll show I'll show the photos of the big bandage around my head um I then during the night I couldn't sleep that well because the um I had these like things they put these things around my legs that are supposed to stop you getting a blood clot like it's almost like a blood pressure cuff that it was like squeezing and like releasing on my legs and I also had a blood pressure thing that would like squeeze occasionally so that kept me awake um so I, I didn't get to sleep until about four in the morning um and the nurse would come in came in at like two in the morning to give me like um antibiotics or something like through my hand thing and um 
Then at seven in the morning, uh, the surgeon ran in again and took the big bandage off my head and like looked behind my ear and was like, yeah, you're all good. Um, I then had to get an x-ray the following morning um, to like see that everything was all in place or something. Um, I was given tablet antibiotics and like paracetamol and ibuprofen to take home and yeah that was pretty much it. Um, I then went home. Um, the next couple of days I was really really ill. Um, I think it was a combination of vertigo um, from the cochlear implant but also I think the antibiotics um, made me really like sick. Every time I took one about like half an hour later I was just sick and it might be a bit it might be a bit TMI <laughs> but like my sick kind of tasted like medicine so I know I was like it hadn't like already been absorbed by the time I was sick so um my mum called back the hospital and asked them if I needed to continue taking them because it is a common side effect of them they make you sick and they said don't take them anymore and as soon as I stopped taking them, I stopped being sick. Um, so I'm pretty sure it was the antibiotics that were making me sick. Um, but yeah, I'm a couple of days off, like three days after the surgery, I felt much better. Like the first couple of days, I was literally just lying in bed being sick. Now I'm like completely back to normal pretty much. I've just got the thing behind my ear. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll show you. Um, I'll show you the thing behind my ear. Um, I won't say anything important after this bit. So if you don't want, because I've been told that it looks a bit like bloody and horrible. So if you don't want to look like you can just go now. Bye. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I'm not going to say, you're not going to miss anything important. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, like hopefully, hopefully you, you can see that. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, also I've made an Instagram account, so um, I'll put a link um, to that in the description. It's just Nell Findlay, my name, so you'll be able to find it. Um, thank you very much everyone for watching. Uh, bye!